could be here. Don't put your hands on a chair and then stand up because the chair lifts by like two centimetres and you yeah, yeah, you saw what happened. So, it's Friday. It's the Friday night run. And uh, the memo has been sent out to the developers. There was like, psst, Jurassic Junkie's back. Do something stupid. And Bethesda went, oh, hold my beer. But before we jump into that, because that's some low-hanging fruit, that's an easy one. We'll pick that apart in a minute. Um, I just want to explain, we're just changing the camera angle around a little bit. I'm going to build a, a, a set, if you want to call it that, behind me. So, there will actually be something interesting behind me instead of just a printer. Oh. No, printer and paper but nonetheless over the next few videos you'll probably see things start to change it might even look worse before it gets better but nonetheless moving on so what's the first thing i want to talk about today it is day of dragons now this is a game that was pointed out to me from cat and discord so thank you cat um and it's the reason i want to talk about more than anything is it's something that i've seen happen numerous times now and it's a thing called asset flipping and i just want to explain what that is and why it's just damaging now to the community so day of dragons a developer's got along and says i want to make a game it's going to be about dragons and you can fly as dragons you can multiply dragons and it will be in a dragon map he then stuck it out there and he was like i need 12k to make this baby and the internet responded with fuck we like dragons here's a half million so I can assume it's beat his expectations if he was only asking for 12k and come away as a half a millionaire. And at this point, this is where I would assume anybody, even if they did the game as a bit of a joke, um, would then go, wow, this, I've got back in. Let's hire some staff and get this fucker going. But this is not the case. So first of all, then, this game has been in development for two years. And if you back it, you get a... I wouldn't say early access model because early access kind of says we're building the game and this is the early version and you'll get a better one as it progresses. No, what he's giving you is a demo of the game that's not the game. So what this is, is this is just your asset flipping. And what that means is when you when you get a, a engine, so be it Unity or Unreal or whatever it is, once you first boot that up, you're just in a blank empty world and from there you can program add in your assets do all modeling whatever it is for someone that's never made a computer game before it's a bit daunting to just be left in this empty box and you're like what do i do so what a lot of people do is we'll go and get external assets made by other people and drop them into their world sometimes it's just there as a placeholder to just get the character working we're like right we've got a character let's fill out all these bits and bobs and then when we're done we can replace it with our actual real character so there is a time and place for it or sometimes people will actually just buy the assets because they are that good but then you'll be having an asset in your game which is the same as an asset in another game which always to me makes you just go it looks a bit cheap if everyone's character models look the same or dragons look the same and whatnot so this guy's gone along and he's purchased the map and he's purchased the dragons. Now he spent about £400 on just buying a pre-made map and then he spent around about £50 a dragon, stuck them together, put no sand in the game whatsoever and gone, there is your demo. Now, yes, the demo does work and people are looking at it going, don't this look pretty? Well, yes, it does because it's an Unreal Engine, which is a very pretty engine and it's from a purchased map so it's not like he's just thrown stuff around this was pre-made and so far it's putting about 400 pound into the hole so we're talking put 400 in take half a million out fucking pretty good deal so far and this is like i said this is where you would be getting the staff in so he was then chucking a, a bunch of concept art which he said was for the game but as the concept artist pointed out, it wasn't. It was the work, but it wasn't the work for this game. And only just now is he actually paid for some real concept art. But he's also saying he's going to continue doing this game himself. Well, that means he's keeping a lot of this money to share amongst all of one. But that's fine if you're going to do it. But as I've said... We've not getting any streaming videos from the developers saying this is the latest version. Everyone's just got this demo, which is just £400 worth of assets put together and shipped off. And this is the thing which is damaging. Now, this is my problem because originally I did trust Kickstarter, not so much now. 
But Kickstarter is obviously a great place to be able to get some crowdfunding for a computer game. Now you can do that elsewhere outside of Kickstarter. Um, you can do it within the actual platforms themselves such as Steam or Xbox. Both they, um, them have early access programs. But the best thing about those is they tend to already give you a pretty established build. Every time I've got an early access game off Xbox, it's been more than playable um, to the point where I've even sank 500 hours into some early access games uh, and you get them at a discount, which is great. And then obviously when the game's done, it will bump up to its full price. And then when they ship the actual final build, you get a copy of that too. Fantastic service. But there's a bit of a downside to that. It means that you have to have a substantial part of the game ready to go um, just so people will get something for their money, which is which is good for us. And um, as a developer, it means they've got to inject that initial money themselves. Um, but it does protect us as the actual users. But it's also harder for a smaller indie dev to kind of just crack straight into there because obviously you need to be like green lit. Um, you, can't, you can't just make anything and just go, there you go, put it on their Xbox. They'll be like, no, you've got to hit some criteria and it's got to look pretty decent. Um, well, I say pretty decent. I've seen some garbage. <laughs> but the thing about Kickstarter is that you don't actually need anything. I can just come up with an idea and go, oh, I'm just going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this into a drinking vessel who wants to back me and that's all you need to do and if somebody backs you then you know there's a market so it's quite good for a developer that has an idea and they'll be like i want to make a chest game but with machine guns i wonder if that will stick and you can use kickstarter as a way to find out so you can say well i'll build it if you give me 40k and then if you only get 1k it doesn't matter, you know there isn't a market for it, you've not injected any money, and those people get their 1k back because you never hit your target. So it's kind of good in that sense, but it just breeds thieves <laughs> and charlatans and people that are just like, right, they're going to want to see some footage, or they want to see some gameplay, or they're going to at least want a demo. So off they go to the asset store, grab these parts, stick them together, and then just send it down to you and go, well, you've got a part of your game now, so uh, cough up. And the thing is, I've seen this time and time again, especially on Steam, not so much on Xbox, but on Steam, when you go down some of the greenlit games, you just like, I've seen those assets before a million times in other different ones. People are just using the asset store like Lego and they're just going, oh, you've made this Lego and I'm going to piece it together in this way. Look at this I made. I'm like, oh, I don't know if you can say you made that. And it is such a shame because... I originally loved the idea of backing these people on Kickstarter. There was something warm and fuzzy inside myself going, not only am I saying straight to a developer, make more of this, because you know what the situation is like now. AAA is a lot of the same old stuff. And to find that game that's different now, you've got to go down into the depths of India and find something different because no one in AAA is willing to do a risk at the moment. I don't know why. Well, I do. They just don't want to lose a bit of money. But it's something that needs to be done before this gets stagnant. So then we had old Kickstarter sat there going, we're doing some crazy old cool stuff. And now I'm just like, I don't know. You you, you have become a man in the street that's just like, do you, do you, you want something? What are you buying? What are you selling? I'm like, is that legal? Is that legit? Is that real? Will I actually get what my money's paying for? And like, yeah, just buy it, son. I don't know. If I'm talking to somebody that's going to use my money to invest it for a game or if they're just going to go cheers because I've seen so many stories of the actual developers going under and flopping after making so much money. So my word to you now is just be very weary when it comes down to backing anything. And also, especially when it's because most games come out PC first when it comes down to like these indie titles. And a lot of the time they'll be like, oh, and then we're going to bring it to console. And I've fallen for that trap a few times, sent them my money and it never made it to console. I'm like, I just don't want to play it on PC. So my money's gone. So let's move on to some Bethesda. I, it is it, because I've not been doing the Friday Night Rants for during Fallout 76 tobacco. Um, I've just been watching it like it's a train wreck and I can't take my eyes away. And every single time I'm like, it cannot get worse, it gets worse. And I actually thought that was it. They hit the pinnacle of how bad everything could be. And then now they're just like, psst, give us a hundred pounds. Give us a hundred pounds for a subscription. 
to what I can only equate to is just next to fuck all. So what is it then? We got Fallout first. Um, it's 12 99s a month, or it is 99.99 for a year. See, they didn't want to charge 100. That's a bit too excessive. 99.99 makes it sound reasonable, doesn't it, kids? So what we're going to get for this? Well, we're going to get Private World, Scrap Box, Survival Tent, Atoms every single month, Ranger Outfit, and Icons. So you get six things, yep, for your £100 investment. But five of them, straight off the bat, I don't see why you should be subscribing to. Like, Xbox Game Pass is around about the same price, twelve ninety nine, and you get 100 games to play with for the entire month. Uh, Netflix, you get thousands of movies and TV shows for around about twelve ninety nine a month. But yet Bethesda is saying, yeah, for twelve ninety nine, we're going to give you some really good content. We're going to give you a fucking icon pack. whoop de doo And why am I getting this on the subscription model? Like, I, it should just be a case of if you've just brought it for a month, that's yours to keep. You can have your icon, son. They're yours to take home. A ranger outfit. Just one. Just one ranger outfit. So even if you continue to buy it every single month, you just get to continue having that ranger outfit. That's it. Like, if it was like every single month we'll give you a new ranger outfit, then okay, then that's better. But one. The only other thing in there they've got is the 1,650 atoms, which is obviously the currency for microtransactions. Um, and yeah, giving people a top up every month of them is kind of good. Um, at first I was just like, no, just give them some free stuff in the game. But I was like, I think as a player, I would actually enjoy going, oh, it's coming the end of the month. I get my uh, pocket money, in-game pocket money. So I can, can see that being quite lucrative for the game is going, oh, then what am I going to buy this month? So that's the only one. And the only one really I can kind of point a finger at to say that's why you're paying per month because every month you're going to get something. Um, this is the weird one there. They've got scrap box. So a scrap box is you go around the world, obviously you just dismantle things, turn it into scrap, and then from there, that's how you can actually create bits and bobs. There's a cap to how much scrap you can have. And now, thanks to the scrap box, it's uncapped. You can scrap as much as you want. But that practically is just a line of code in the game saying, do you know when we had a max out of 500? Just just set it to 10 billion. Just set it to 10 billion. No one will get that money. Done. That's, that's how much work it is to just change something like that. But they've got to do it in the Bethesda way. They're like, right, so all we've got to do is just change it from X amount of scrap to unlimited scrap. Yes, that, that's all we've got to do, yes. Shall we set it to delete everyone's scrap when they put it in the box? Now that's a fucking good idea. That's your 12 99 a month, ship it. And they've shipped it, people have got all the fucking hard-earned scrap and gone, oh. I have just spent £100 on this DLC, but oh, it's worth it. It's gone. My fucking scrap is gone. So now people are kicking off that they've lost all the scrap because it just poof, went away. And then the last thing that they're giving you is private worlds. Now, this is interesting because it's like they've gone the backwards way around things. Most games, when you play, when you buy a game, it's yours. And if it's got multiplayer elements... Sometimes they'll be online, um, so you'll have to have a lobby to connect to and maybe up to 50 of you will all be attacking and stuff like that. And, and yeah, there's going to be server costs and things like that to keep going, to have something like that. But this is just for eight players. And if there's a game that allows you to invite, invite seven other people into your world, I would just see that as that's being ran on my console or my PC or whatever it is. Minecraft, for instance. I get a big old world. I go, who wants to come play with me? And seven people can come and join me in my world. And that should just be a part of the game from the get-go. Um, and then if I want to go, well, when I turn this console off, the world will disappear and them seven can't continue. Um, so therefore, I'll need it to go online. And I need to pay for a server to do that. But the way they've done it is you buy the game and you can all go online on these servers for free. But then to take it offline, you are now having to pay £100. Now, I know somebody's going to be like, yeah, but the difference between them two is that it can be a private world, but it can stay online so your friends can still join it. But first of all, they've fucked that up, haven't they? They've made it private, but by doing it private, it means if anyone can see that you've got your own world, they can just automatically join it. 
provider they're on your friends list so it means griefers can just go oh look this person whoosh, going straight into their world you can't block them at the moment fucking yeah just don't rush it out the doors it's only charged people 100 pound whatever you do don't polish that dirt and on top of it people are saying they're going into the world and it's already been pre-looted um so it looks like it's old instances of servers have been then passed out to people as their private servers but bringing it back to compare with this this minecraft kind of situation it's just like i cannot fathom that you're charging a hundred pounds for people to just be able to have the little slot like it if if anything i think they should just say right even if you want to take money out of pockets again just say 15 quid one off and you can have your own offline server which means you can invite your friends in and you can all play together it won't cost any uh, extra resources Aaron because you're going to house this yourself it's going to sit on your pc or your console and you'll be inviting them into your broadband so it will all be run by you and we just want 15 quid to rob you i'll be like ah, that's okay that that's not too bad but they're saying oh we're going to keep it online um, so it's yours, but because we're housing it, therefore we need some upkeep. And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. You'll need some upkeep. But do you know when I'm on Netflix, I can sit there and how much bandwidth I will go through churning through the 4K shows. And I could sit there and watch it for days on end. And they're saying, oh, it's just £12. And that's not really for the upkeep of sending it down the pipe. It's also to take it and go off and make new movies and TV shows. Right, these fucking cunts are just turning around and going, yeah, give us £100 to a... Uh, yeah, we've got to keep this server running, do you know what I mean? We, you and your eight mates in it. <laughs> Ghastly sum. And more than anything, I just... I hope to God no one's paid the 100 Because, yes, it's a better deal buying it 100 But when it's something like this, especially when it's coming from Bethesda, there has to be alarm bells ringing that says, it could be gash. Don't buy it. So just... Put your toe in with that twelve ninety nine and just go, ah, it's fucking broken. Take your feet back out. Wait six months until they actually patch it. But at this point, I'm just, like, impressed how greedy and bad and buggy everything is. I, it would, if you just took Bethesda's name away and just glued on some random developer name, Cat Squiggles United... And I'd be like, yeah, I don't know who them devs are, but they've made a semi-okay good game and it's a bit broken, but the the new developers, you know what I mean? Let's give them a bit of leeway. We're talking about fucking Bethesda. These, this behemoth of a developer, and it's just... I, 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 there's no words. There's no words. It's, it's impressive that they've got this far. They keep getting away with it, and people keep fucking funding it. I cannot fathom why you would keep doing it just fucking no pull the ripcord and just go i am done with this game it's it's amazing so i am really glad that i never went out and purchased this game um and more than anything i'm so tempted to just fucking pirate it <laughs> to just see how bad it is but i won't pirate it i'll just buy it second hand and then just jump on that way they don't get to touch my money um but yeah i i i'm I want to know how bad it actually is because I do like Fallout. Um, but over the years, I'm like, I can see them starting to just start pulling the, the teats of that cow and pulling so aggressively that it's just a bloody nump in their hand and they're just like <laughs> sucking on what they can get out of it. The last bits of blood, the last bits of milk before they're just like, yeah, it's dead. It's fucking dead. Let's now harvest another cow. And I, I just... I've completely lost respect for the developers now and I will not touch any of their shit. So I think that's where I'm going to love you and leave you. Um, this is a bit all over the place at the moment because I'm, I'm doing a new setup and I'm recording straight from the camera with a microphone. It's confused me a little bit what's happening. I've had to stop and start a few different times, which you may notice I'm not in my normal smooth flow of talking. Um, but I'll get better because I just wanted to, I wanted to, more than anything, streamline the process. I've noticed because when I'm on Twitch, um, because I've made it, so with the click of the fingers I can be streaming, the camera set up, the mic set up, everything's done and there's very little for me to do meant that I started streaming more because it became easier and I realized that I need to apply that um, to YouTube so that's why I've now mounted the camera up there so it's always plugged in always ready to go I've got a couple of lights sat at me just pull them straight out I ain't got to prat about plugging things in checking the lights and all the different bits so 
as I said at the start of this, over the next few videos, you'll notice a few things will change in the background. Um, but also, if you ever see a story that you want me to talk about, especially if it's not, not something that's in the uh, mainstream and it's something that most people haven't heard of, of there's a link down below to our Discord server and within there you've actually got a room called Friday Night Content. So if you ever see anything that you want me to have a rant about, pop it in there. And the last thing I'll leave you with is because it's a Friday Night Rant and as I said I'm a streamer, on Fridays I always do scary games and I we have a good laugh doing it between me trying to play the game and the viewers trying to fuck with me at the same time and we're playing Visage at the moment which has to be one of the best horrors that I've played in a long time. That's what we want. Smash that bitch up. Where's my... You can't get me in it. Yeah! <laughs> a simple once it's so it's simple once so if you want to see me play that tonight i will be doing it around about seven o'clock so probably an hour after you've watched this or you could have watched this on a sunday and all i've got to say is you've missed out you've missed out on the most important thing of your life so i'm gonna love you and leave you and uh, i've just realized most videos i normally just go see you later and shoot myself off out of frame which I can't do now because you can see every bit of me. So I think I'm just going to slide out this way. Thank you very much for watching, people. Bye-bye. That didn't work well.